Everyone has heard of black holes. Whether you're an astrophysicist or watching your first astronomy video, odds are you've at least familiarised yourself with the most chaotic yet unknown force in all of the observable universe. However, beyond knowing the basic facts of black holes, such as their intense levels of gravity or their incredibly mysterious nature in general, most people can't think of a specific system or dead star when coming up with examples of the phenomenon. That'll hopefully change by the end of this video. Earlier this year, astronomers discovered a new black hole that could change that fact in a way that even scientists cannot fathom. In other words, the fast-growing black hole and most luminous star system in the history of our 13.8 billion-year-old universe was detected by NASA and is now presenting astronomers with their largest event horizon yet. Before we get excited about the potential of this behemoth black hole and the secrets it could help spill, we must first peel back the layers of its role in space and the possibility it presents outside of being just another potential wormhole into another universe. This is the first part of the story of Black Hole J1144. We've covered black holes here at Access Astronomy before, but want to make sure the basics of black holes is covered for anyone unaware of these celestial enigmas. Black holes were first theorised as far back as the 18th century and confirmed in 1915 with Einstein's theory of relativity and the effect gravity has on light waves. These theories expanded in the 1950s as the enthusiasm around the death of stars and collapsing objects in general heightened through astronomical communities. As the years went on and technology improved, more information was learned about black holes and it was understood they posed as deformed regions in space featuring an event horizon or point of no return in which an object enters a black hole and becomes unobservable. All black holes contain three properties of mass, electric charge, and angular momentum, unless they are simplistic black holes and only consist of mass. Astronomers also quickly came to the understanding that black holes do not simply pull in every single object around them, but rather only absorb the objects that are in its very immediate vicinity. Black holes also contain gravitational singularities, which are points within black holes that break down space-time due to a nearly infinite level of density at its core, where the intensity of gravity is too high for comprehension. That being said, the two kinds of black holes both feature theoretically different centres. The simplistic black holes with only mass are basically Venus flytraps in space. Once an object crosses its event horizon, it can only avoid the singularity for so long before it is eventually sucked in and crushed into oblivion, due to its infinite density. The object's mass is then added to the total mass of the black hole, and that is how it grows. The other half of black holes, the ones with electric charge and angular momentum, are not inevitable in that all objects that pass the event horizon will be destroyed. For example, if the object avoided the singularity, which at this point in time is an unobservable theory, it could exit into an alternative version of space-time, where the laws and properties of our universe do not exist. Of course, these are colloquially known as wormholes, and are the dominating image people conjure when they hear the term black holes, rather than as destructive forces of mysterious gravity to which they actually are. One important feature of black holes we didn't mention the first time are their gas-burning sidekicks called quasars. A quasar, the shortened form of quasar stellar object, is the brightest form of an active galactic nucleus, referred to as an AGN. 
quasars are all powered by their main counterpart, black holes, which pull in all matter surrounding the system through their event horizons. Before the gas can be fully absorbed, however, it forms an accretion disk. These gaseous disks form due to peculiar measurements of friction, uneven iridance, and effects of magnetism that cause the material being sucked in to slowly spiral inward as it surrounds the central body. These accretion disks then heat because of the aforementioned friction and electromagnetic radiation is released as a result. This energy isn't like any normal energy created by stars or even galaxies in total though. The radiant energy output is at such an intense degree, quasars' luminosities rival the luminosity of entire galaxies at rates as high as 10,000 to 1. Quasars are normally found at the centres of galaxies, especially in larger galaxies which act as hosts for merging galaxies, formed from the deaths of stars, the ensuing black holes, and supernovas in general. The most useful aspect of the further study of quasars is the newfound ability to visualise what the early part of the universe's ancient history looks like. Astronomers have come to understand ultra-bright burning quasars would have dominated the cosmos in the first 3-4 to four billion years after its genesis. At the peak epoch of this archaic period, Quasars were so prolific, they formed highly concentrated, gravitationally dense quasar clusters, categorised as large quasar groups. Large quasar groups are some of the biggest structures in the observable universe, competing against the likes of walls and filaments. In fact, the third largest theoretical structure in recorded history is the huge large quasar group discovered over a period of time spanning 2012 to 2013. The huge large quasar group stretches a whopping 4 billion light years and consists of 73 decoupled quasars. It's also the first structure in the observable universe to be confirmed to be larger than 3 billion light years in diameter as the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall and giant Gamma Ray Burst Ring are still disputed as being actual structures or not. Our first video diving deeper into the nature of black holes focused on a newly discovered lower mass gap black hole in the V723 Monocerotis star system, dubbed the Unicorn. This time around, while our black hole is still the most unique of all the cosmos, it comes at literally the opposite side of the spectrum. Rather than the smallest and closest black hole ever discovered on Earth, astronomers have detected the fastest growing black hole with the brightest quasar pairing in the history of the observable universe. The black hole in question is known as J1144, and is the second half of the system, also featuring the universe's brightest quasar. Both of these gargantuan objects can be found near the constellation Centaurus when looking at the night sky. The light from J1144's high-powered quasar took 7 billion years to reach Earth, and was stumbled upon by astronomers at the Siding Spring Observatory in Australia, with a sky mapper, Southern Sky Survey utilised a 1.3 metre telescope to hunt for unaccounted binary stars. Why this system took so long to be recognised for its unbelievably intense luminosity and record-breaking accretion is due to its location in the universe. The area it's in is found close to what is known as the Galactic Equator, the galactic equator is the imaginary line that cuts any galaxy, or in this case, the Milky Way, in half, splitting it into a top and bottom. This specific line, when viewed from Earth, contains a voluminous number of celestial objects that made determining objects' luminosity quite difficult. However, when the survey found one object out of about 700 that didn't match their previous findings, astronomers knew they had something special on their hands. Some have questioned why such a special object wouldn't have been classified as a quasar back when the first quasar was ever documented in the 1960s, 
when astronomers first learned of their role in space and sought to discover more. The answer actually speaks to the immense speed at which the black hole in question is growing, and in turn, powering its quasar. In the 1960s, J1144 was not yet bright enough to be classified as such at the time, but now that is no longer the case. To put it in perspective, the black hole in question absorbs the equivalent of one Earth mass every second. Over the course of one Earth year, this would be the equivalent to sucking in 80 solar masses. In fact, the accretion has piled up so quickly, and the ensuing quasar has burned so brightly, the light J1144 produces at this present moment is a whopping 7,000 times brighter than if you compiled all of the light from the entirety of the Milky Way galaxy. In terms of size, J1144 is bigger than 3 billion times the mass of the Sun, and a jaw-dropping 500 times bigger than the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way, known as Sagittarius A star. It should be noted that while there have been plenty of black holes of equal mass to J1144, those stopped growing billions of years ago. This is what fascinates astronomers most of all. The fact that such a unique black hole exists this long after the creation of the universe and other black holes like it have gone dormant. It's not hard to get excited about the potential benefits of finding such a rare yet breathtaking celestial unicorn and the potential to learn so much more about black holes and the quasars they create. Mm -hmm.